Hey everyone, I'm Tony with Clarkson Santoro and this is our weekly real estate update for May 27th. In this weekly series, we update you on the latest trends that are occurring in our real estate market here in San Ramon. Using our more than 50 combined years of experience helping clients buy and sell homes, we explain what those numbers mean for you as a homeowner or as someone looking for a house you will love to call home. The current inventory is 55 homes, up from 44 last week. The average asking price of those homes was $2,039,000, which is up from last week's average of $1,992,000. Nine homes asking an average of $2,110,000 went pending this week. That is more pending homes than last week's number of nine, with a higher average asking price from last week's $1,832,000. A total of 21 homes sold this week, with an average sales price of $2,309,000. That average price was up from last week's average price of $1,959,000. And the total number of sold homes was higher than last week's 11. Now that we've seen what the market did this week, we also like to look at six broader trends that help us understand the strength of the San Ramon market, and more importantly, give us a clue about where the market might be headed. The first four indicators give us a look at the quantitative numbers, which tell us what the market has been doing. The final two indicators are more predictive of what the market might be doing in the future. We are changing our grading metrics this week from a letter grade to a scale of one to 100. The higher the number, the more the market indicator favors sellers over buyers. A measurement of 50 would mean that the indicator doesn't seem to favor either a buyer's or a seller's interests. To begin our conversation this week, it appears that the market shift that we have all been feeling started about two weeks ago around May 9th. The first indicator that we look at is inventory levels. Our inventory has been climbing steadily since May 4th and now stands at 55 homes, just over the amount of a neutral market. As this inventory builds, it takes the pressure off of buyers to feel the need to compete for every single home that they look at. And it makes it more important that sellers do all they can to present a more compelling home for buyers to want to purchase. Last week, this indicator received a score of 60, leaning towards the seller's market. This week, we give this indicator a lower score of 45, confirming that this metric is now leaning in the buyer's favor. The market turnover rate is a key metric and is one of the best gauges to judge how healthy the market is. Over the last year, the market turnover rate averaged about 2.4 times a month, but it has dropped below one for the first time since 2019. Today's measurement is just 0.85. The average home was selling about 10 days or less, but the average home is now above 30 days on the market. Last week, this indicator received a score of 60, still slightly more towards the seller's market, this week, we gave this indicator a lower score of 45, another sign of an emerging buyer's market. The amount paid over the asking price is another great barometer of the market's overall strength. This week, that number showed no signs of slowing down as the average house is selling for about 281,000 over the list price. Just a small dip from last week. But remember, these numbers are coming from homes that went pending 30 days ago and do not reflect the change in the market that just happened about two weeks ago. We will closely watch this metric over the next few weeks. Last week, this indicator received a score of 95. This week, we give this indicator a score of 90. Just like the amount paid over asking price, the sales price chart is a reflection of pending sales that occurred 30 or more days ago. Sales prices continue to show a strong market, with homes now closing with an average sales price of $2,336, or up about $60,000 from last week. Last week, this indicator received a score of 90 and is up slightly this week to a score of 92. One of the two predictive indicators we follow is the Invesco Triple Q Stock Fund. It tracks the health and valuation of the high-tech stock market, and we have watched this indicator drop from a high of 401 to, at the start of the year, to today's level of 290. That is a clear sign that the health of high-tech stock portfolios is weakening and will reduce the ability of buyers coming up from the Silicon Valley to overbid on homes. Last week, this indicator received a score of 35 and it remains at that same number this week. It reflects a concern that Silicon Valley buyers are in the weaker cash position than they were four months ago. The last indicator we follow are interest rates, which have been climbing since August of 2021. 
from 2.84% to today's level of 5.25%. This is a sharp increase in the cost of money, and it has put a crimp in the buyer's ability to finance homes. Last week, this indicator received a score of 40, leaning toward a weaker market. This week, we give this indicator the same score as last week. In summary, the most current metrics and indicators show a market that is changing from a strong seller's market to a market that is more friendly to buyers. Homes that receive multiple offers are now receiving one offer, and for most homes, the bidding wars appear to be a feature of the recent past. The overall market score this week is 58, down from last week's score of 63. The next few weeks will either confirm we have entered a buyer's market and a probable flattening of sales prices, or if this slowdown is just a dip in the road. I hope this weekly summary and commentary was helpful. Let me know in the comments down below or contact us directly if you have specific questions about what the numbers mean for you. And if you find this information helpful, hit the like button and subscribe so that you will always be up to date on the latest real estate trends here in San Ramon. Have a safe weekend, and we will see you next week with a new update.